The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians. Hour. My pleasure to be here Monday through Friday at noon till 1 p.m. Eastern Time, 877-927-6648. Number to call in. Let me just quickly show, because it's Technical Friday, let me just show some of the technicals here based on the uh, E-mini two-minute chart. Look, there's your peak. This is a very interesting one. Let me just see if I can open it up even more. Here we go. Yes. So it made a peak D in the two-minute chart in the Chapman Wave methodology. I meant to do that, and I forgot to actually put up my chart. I'll try to do that during the break. We're always looking for the lowest, most identifiable low bar, and merely count each successively higher peak, labeling them alphabetically, uppercase A, B, C, D, E, F, G on the way up, and lowercase on the way down. At the fourth highest peak, peak D, other things can happen. You can see what happened here. Went to a peak D. Let me show you what happened. Let me move this to the right a little bit. So you got your peak from the low that was made this morning at uh, 8 o'clock. Well, about 8. It wasn't 8.30. It was 8.04. Uh, at, in the 29, 20 area, it ran up to a peak A, pull back, peak B, pull, pull back C and D. It goes to a D, and at 9.10 this morning, Eastern time at 29.32.75, it gives a signal where the stochastic turns down sharply, the MACD is starting to move down, and all of a sudden everything crosses negative and the price goes below the 14 and the 9 period moving averages, and it goes to a trough D. That trough D, I should have put an up arrow in, uh, made a, a V-shaped bottom in the on-balance volume, the stochastic turned up, and MACD was already turning up. When people talk about laggy indicators, if you know how to use these things exactly right, you can get to the tick, to the low bar, an exact turn. So in this particular case, look at that. Not only did you get a volume spike, you got the turn in the stochastic one bar before, the unbalance one bar before, and the MACD one, two bars later. That's pretty darn good. It goes to peak A, peak B. I chose to call this a Chapman Wave um, phantom peak right here because the, the stochastic, uh, sorry, the on-balance volume gave a pullback there and had two parallel high bars and it really looked as if it should be. So to be conservative, I like to be conservative in this whole business. Otherwise, you can I, I, it means you give up some gains, but you certainly really keep tight stops so you can stay in the business as long as possible. It went to a peak C1 uh, at the 29, 29.75 level. And then it pulled back, and then it made this cup formation. You have a chance to actually draw it in because I was trading actually the RTY, which is the uh, IWM, because sometimes I like to practice because the IWM, the Russell 2000 futures, trade in a completely different manner very often to the E-mini. I can be looking at my left, one of, one of my mini screens, my left screen on the here, uh, right next to the middle screen, and it, it gives me the... Um, E mini and it gives the the, you know, the Dow futures gives a lot of uh, information, and that's showing you real positive activity. I'm looking at the IYM and it's actually going down. And well, the other way around this morning, when there was uh, there was a chance that I managed to pick a <clears throat> a level uh, where there was a pullback based on the peak D, which worked out, and that's very interesting. So here we get a peak C1. Cup formation, you see the MACD and stochastic are pulling back. So what happens, it comes back off to the peak C2. That's a parallel high. I like to treat that as if it's a, a peak D. It's, a, it's really, once again, it's an artificial or phantom peak. Really good technical indicator. Usually I have a chance I didn't have because I was busy at the time. Make it a red, so it can't get a down arrow because a down arrow can only apply to a, a high that reverses from, say, a D, E, or F. Um, in this particular C1, C2, I put a red plus sign. And what is it? It goes right down to the 14-period moving average and then starts a new buy signal based on the stochastic and MACD turning up and the unbalanced volume. It goes to peak ABC. It goes to a D. And right at that D, you can see the failing MACD and the stochastic failing, and boom, it starts to pull back. Not deep. It pulls back just a little bit, and now it's uh, gone above the 
Nine green, nine period moving average. That's good. The MACD is not yet cross positive. The stochastic is still quite, quite weak. So we're going to be watching this very closely. If you look at the RTY M19, look at this. Where did it go? Oh, there it is. So there was that, uh, oh, it was an E. It was a peak E right there where the MACD was fading stochastic. They have a very nice pullback, and then now it's gone to peak A, B. F slash C, I wasn't too sure because the MACD was still strong. It was still above the nine period moving average. Then it went to a D and then it pulled back. All right, just thought I'd do that little technical uh, stuff that we wanted to do on Friday. Now let's talk about gold. <clears throat> gold is up 10.3 at the high of the day, 1290. This is nice action. Let me explain what I've talked about all week. I said all week that there was a trend line right here. Based on the low that was made, and the date was the price was different. The price, the time was exactly right. It was the week of the 17th of August at 1186.2. That's changed because it's it's this is a gold continuous contract. Price always changes, never the chart formation. And what happened is we started a new move up, and it went to peak A, and the peak B, a peak C, a D, and then it went to an E, and just a fantastic left side, right side price time match. Why do I say fantastic? Because it went to um, number of bars on the left to the number of bars based on not the low. That, that wouldn't have worked out. It was based on a very important candle I always talk about for, to subscribers. And we went right there. It was one week late, and it went, instead of 1353.9, it went to a leg E and then a peak E at 1356.2. Huh, not bad. Um, and then it started to pull back. And then I said this trend line with the lows that were made, back in August, back uh, back in October, and then the higher low that was made in March, the week of the 16th, uh, November the 16th, all gave a rising trend line. That trend line said, the gold better not trade under 12, uh, close under 1268, because that would be a very big negative. And if it did that, it would have broken this uptrend line and the MACD and stochastic wouldn't have improved. Well, they have, they have not improved. The stochastic has tried to turn around on today's action, but it held that. It's called the Chapman Wave inside track, in this case, because at the bottom, it's the propellant support line. You break that, you're in trouble. This time it held it and it ran up. Well, it's done that many times before. This is what's very important. Give us some relationship. In the gold, um, th this move up, we've seen this many times before. Most recent was the low that was made on the 4th of April at 1284.9. The continuous contract had a little inside doji candle the following day, and then boom, green, 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 and screams up all the way to 13, 14.7. Peak A becomes a peak A minus because of that huge decline. So what's different this time? I don't really see anything too different. I still see a weak, a weak uh, gold and a weak... Um, weekly, gold daily, weekly, and a monthly. Here's the difference. I'll just do silver quickly before I tell you what I think the difference is. Silver is up very nicely. This is a leg A, gone to a trough. Oh, C, huh? very interesting. All right, trough C, doesn't matter. And a B in the monthly chart. The difference is that gold's MACD in the weekly chart actually held very nicely. Gold's stochastic and MACD have been rising, and this is really a big positive, and I like that. I prefer to see gold moving because silver is moving and sometimes leading. That's kind of good in the short term. I'll be back because we want to talk about currencies and the dollar, which is pulling back a little bit today, down 22 cents. I'll be right back. Dow's up 33. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. 
The TAS Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of TAS Market Profile, the TAS Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. We're back. And, of course, during the break, uh, I must have done uh, yeah, at least three or four different questions and charts and things. So where was I? Let's go back to silver. Silver in leg A. And in the chap wave count of the downside, what does Peter say in the debt? Because the count of the silver daily is F slash B and then G. Okay, good. Oh, of course it's F slash B and then G. Uh, I typed that incorrectly. F, thank you. I, I love this. I always have people who know the chap wave very well. Uh, giving me corrections here because I do these things sometimes on the fly real quickly and it's easy to miss a count. Your only obligation is to get that count and I missed it. So that was an F slash B and now it's a G. And yeah, we got it. Trough G. Nice move off the trough G in leg A in the silver. Um, and look, the MACD is starting. To, it's already been acting quite well and then it crossed positive and the stochastic has been rallying all the time above 20%, went to 31%. As the, there was a divergence, positive divergence, technicals improving, price moving down. This is nice action. So let me just go to what I am looking at here because the monthly chart, this is just the beginning of something. It might be a bigger move. You never know. Uh, but the monthly chart suggesting that mm, needs a lot of work. Yeah, and this is what I was looking at. Let me just go back. I'm going to go to the dollar to show you that the dollar did that a requisite leg D that we were expecting. Today, still leg D because it went to a higher height, 98.33. Fabulous move from the 88s to the 98.33 area for currency. This is a big move in currencies. Look at this. It goes from 88.25 February of a year ago <clears throat> to today's high of 98.33. Uh, we've been long over a year. I like this very much. Now, as I said, I was talking to uh, interviewed by Tom yesterday. I said, for, for, for my purpose, everything that we wanted has been uh, worked out to this point in the dollar. And I, I, I don't mind. I wouldn't mind another breather, another U-shaped pattern. Uh, that's fine with me. Uh, going up is also fine. But I'm just saying, stochastics at 87%. That's very good. MACD is strong. The weekly has just, look, this is like the silver chart in a way. Look, the MACD in the weekly chart has just crossed positive. 
So if it gives it back very quickly, that's not going to be too great. But at this point, this is a nice sign. The stochastics at 82%. That's good. Look at the monthly chart. The MACD is strong. Stochastics at 86%. I like the dollar. I don't dis disagree that some people are saying there could be a good rally in gold. Hey, there would be many good rallies in gold. It depends on what, how, how it can hold. And that's the most important thing. Look at the euro, E-U-R-U-S-D. Uh, euro, dollar, currency pair. Uh, this is very important because, yeah, let me explain something. I had a question in the den as to what would constitute a failure pattern. Why do I always look at D, E, F, or G as to make higher highs sell a buy mode, buy signal to buy mode? Why do I say gray leg A, gray leg B when it's under a previous high? One of the reasons is I learned a long time ago when I used to hand chart all this stuff that there, was, there could be a failure at any point if you've come from a high even if it's just a recovery high, just a high, a very high bar, and you pull back very sharply, and then you start a little buy mode. And look at this, in still in the euro. Back on uh, week of the 16th of November, the low is 1.121, and then it rallies, goes to peak A, and it pulls back, gives back a chunk, but it doesn't break the low. Then it rallies, and it goes to a B just above, and then it pulls back. That uh, I should have done that. I just didn't have time. That way I wasn't thinking about it at the moment. I always make these gray. I call them gray for a reason. One of the reasons is that if you're under a previous top, a DPD or something like that, but it's really a, a, a pretty sharp move to the downside, to inaugurate a, sell, a buy signal that becomes a buy mode, meaning I'm going to a blue, I'm so confident that I'm going to the fourth, put to a fourth higher peak, that I can call it a, a, a blue buy signal to buy mode. It takes a lot. And look, in this particular case, the stochastic didn't even get above 50% when it went to C. The magnet looked good, but the price just didn't hold. So I always treat that as a potential failure pattern. And I, I, I used to call it uh, here in the, in the Tiger uh, Technicians Hour. Uh, you know, I've been doing this for 15 years or something, five days a week. Well, I started for three now, for five, for at least 12, 13 years, maybe more. Um, I, I used to say, because this is the terminology I use, all the terminology I, 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 dec I denominate, I use because it's descriptive. And the description was, it is in a retracement rally failure mode. Well, that's a lot of words. I mean, it's very explanatory. It tells you exactly what it is. But <clears throat> it's too many words. So I, I just say gray A, gray A, B, gray A, B, and, and my, my subscribers know that it means it could fail at any point. When I eventually see the stochastic trading above 80, say 83%, something like that, nicely above 80%, and maybe it's only in a, in a B or a C, and the MACD is doing well, I'll say buy signal to buy mode, it should go to a D. I hope that's the clarification. That really was the question. It was a question about something else. Let me see if I can even find the stock that it was. It was NVTA. I'm almost sure because it's so close to NV. NVIDIA is NVTA. Oh, man, where did I type that? I typed it in the den, of course. Mistake. <laughs> type it right. Yeah, there it is. So, yeah, yes, the exact same. It's the opposite exact thing. Look, the cup formation it goes to NVTA, trading at 23.52, up 35 cents. NVTA. NVTA Corporation Diagnostic. No, it's an AE, not an EA. It's NVTA. 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 I don't know how you pronounce it. And it's a diagnostic genetics. Oh, man, if it's genetics, then it's obviously something very complicated. In Vitea. <laughs> uh, double top, it goes to um, 2576 on the 21st of March. And then it has an insight, A, B, C, and it just worked out perfectly. I called it an E at the time because I was doing it very quickly. But I should have said, brand new buy signal to buy mode A. Peak B, peak C, and lo and behold, that is an E, but it was also a brand new D, so I don't have to put the, uh, the inverted V-shaped pattern. That is a D with a down arrow. That's, that's the drop bucket pattern that I like to talk about, where the technicals are failing, but it still tries to retest and does retest the left side high. So now it's pulled back. But 
That oh, it was an E. Now it's a D. It's a different thing altogether. And it doesn't. And if it was an E, it would have been a failure pattern, which said you've got to be careful because that E wasn't conforming to good technicals. It was price price moving up by itself. So now here's the question. I've got to a G slash C in the weekly chart. And if I had to squeeze this, I don't remember anymore. Is it, did this make, where does it come from? I think it comes from a higher high. No, it doesn't. Okay, that is an all-time uh, high. It was made back at that peak D in the daily, and it was peak. Now, I've got this as a G slash C. I'll explain why. In this particular instance, the weekly chart on the 21st of September at 1838 made a top, very soon, made a little doji candle, a failure, and then it came down, and the MACD turned down, stochastic went from the 92, 3% area, broke under 80%. So it pulls back, and it goes to a trough C, and then it starts to brand new, what looks like a buy mode, stochastic, uh, on balance volume, everything turns up, MACD turns up, and it went to a peak A, then a B, and now I've got this as a G slash C. I'm actually going to say, that why, why was that? Because I just extended that. But in fact, this the stochastic's at 86%. I'm getting rid of the G. I think this is a C, and that's the way I'm going to notate it for now. Edit. It's in a C, and it should go for a D. It doesn't tell you how long. And it's got a lot of room before it can go to the C. In v Vitea uh, Corporation Diagnostic Genetics, I think is only a leg B monthly. This looks good. Since I'll be back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So I've got a couple of questions. I'll do them in turn. Teva, what is Teva Pharmaceutical? Sean McGrail says, okay, Sean says, let's see. 
looking at Tava. January 17, 2020, 22.50 calls. January 17. Looking at it like a lottery ticket test of 8, 27, uh, 8, 8, August 20, 2017 weekly breakdown, somewhere between 29 and 32. Uh, let's see. Okay. So, uh, Tava. Trading right now at 15.21, up 0 0.07. So you can see now what I've done is I've given you the gray leg A goes to a peak A and a gray leg B and it is at 27, 28. So this is leg B right now. So this is what I'm looking at in the in the cup formation that could form in the monthly chart if this arch pattern starts to see a really strong move to the upside, you could potentially get an arch going to a cup. And that cup becomes very positive if at any point it can take out the 25.96 high of August of last year. But let's go step by step. So, Sean, you are in the position. So all you can do now is monitor. You can get out of it, but you're in the position. So I And you got it in January, so you got it. Oh, you got it, and you saw a fabulous rally, and then you saw, I don't know if you got a second time round, or, but it did give back quite a lot. And it's now got a doji candle from last week with a low of 14.04, uh, first green candle. This is a, I love this as a potential. Only when you look back weeks and weeks later, you say, oh my goodness, I missed this doji candle that gave the exact low. That's the potential you've got here. I think we've discussed this at some point. Anyway, so what I'm going to say to you is, you've got your position. The way I would monitor the position is only if in the next week or two, and this isn't healthcare, we have Teva Pharmaceuticals. Uh, what is it called exactly? Teva Pharmaceutical Industry, Industry, oh, Industry. Teva Pharmaceutical Industries, I think is a full name, ADR. Is it, I think it's in Ireland, I'm not sure. So look at this, a really nice action. It's worked very hard to go from 14 to the 15.22 high, taken uh, uh, over a week to do it. I like the action. It's over the MACD, the stochastic, and everything's good. But I don't want to see it go underneath the can or not more than one intraday. If it goes under 1466, it's going to close above 1466. If it doesn't, I'm going to say to you, hey, now you've got to watch this real closely. That's number one. Number two is I love the action because I can immediately draw a left side, right side price tie match, and I can go from here to here to the low. And I can say you've got all of, <clears throat> I prefer it did in a shorter time period, but you've got all of next week. Yes, you've got until the 7th of May. It's over a week. Oh, did I just move that? Sorry, I didn't mean to do it. Let's try it again. You've got till the 3rd of May. Oh, that's better. In which to get a left side, right side price time match. And that, in fact, is, oh, it's underway right now. Look at this. In fact, it's using it as support, not resistance. So, okay, I love the action. And I'm going to tell you right now that if Teva Pharmaceuticals closes above the high of the 5th of April, above 14.43, and two days after it does it, it hasn't tested the 14.91, 14-period uh, 14 moving average, in fact, it's it's held nicely. It's trying to even move higher. The 50-period moving average of 15.97 becomes its focus. And I can only do this step by step. That's the only way we can do it. So congratulations. You're in the position if you got into it. So you had it before. I think you had it before, and now you're doing it again. Let me read that again. You can get it like a lottery ticket. So you've got the calls. January 17th, 2020. Oh, January the 17th, 2020 calls. I, I, I didn't even see that. Oh, <laughs> I thought this was coming out. I thought you had those and you were looking at something like uh, uh, May or something. No, January the 17th. I think that that's a really clever way to play this. You're going to sit through a couple of real big bumps because of the breakdown under the previous low. That's one hundred over a period of time. I like the action right now. I'm looking, I'm putting it down. I'll do some work over the weekend for my subscribers. Thank you for the, the heads up. I'm just going to look at it. I don't know if I want to get into anything pharmaceutical with this uh, election coming up, but it is very nice action so far. So I've got Teva down 
we'll see what but i think you're on the right idea looking out this particular cup formation potential says that if it doesn't take out the low of november of 10.85 in the next two months but instead has a really strong attempt to get to the 16s trying to treat the 14s as support i think you're going to be getting out of this a lot quicker um <laughs> so uh something between 29 and 32 yeah just one step at a time i can't even look we haven't even had this is the first monthly week uh, sorry this is the first weekly candle that is green in quite some time it's only the second one in months so uh, let's just deal with that next question i had is um why are you not leading the show with covering the major indexes on daily, weekly, monthly basis anymore? That's because in the update that I do at noon, I do an update and I give kind of good parameters. But I, you know what? I, especially on a Friday, I'm going to do that right now. Let me just do this. INDU, it's a good question. And I'd like to deal with it right now. The Dow to me is going to make all-time highs. That's the way it's looking right now. Time-wise, I've been saying I think there's a bit of a pullback coming here. It's going to give us a chance to see, do we want to prepare for a move now sooner going into the uh, 26 960s for an all-time high or do i think a pullback towards the 26200 26000 level is kind of there as a breather some kind of a step back before it can race i'm always thinking of this one particular very funny story that i had and when i was an athlete in high school i don't i have no time to go into it right now but um all i'm looking at is I think that we're going to be pulling back a little more. I must say, I'm kind of impressed. The Dow's at 26 right now with Intel down sharply, a whole bunch of things going on. So that's my outlook. I believe we will be going to all-time highs, just a matter of when. And the way the monthly chart is looking, it's got a lot of work to improve the MACD. Stochastic's good at 72%, but that uh, weekly chart that I'm looking at in the middle here with a potential doji leg C right now, says, hey, if there's no new recovery high above 26,695 next week, that makes a peak C, and we've started some kind of a shorter term consolidation. The S&P is a little different. S&P came within fractions. The SPY was within 42 cents or 35 cents of making an all-time high. It's holding nicely at up 510 today at 29.31. If it breaks out above 29.36.83, the high of the 24th, I don't think the Dow is going to be separated by going down. I think it's going to hold steady, and maybe we'll have to just jump on board from the long side. But I'm thinking here that we are close to some kind of a consolidation. The QQQs have already done fantastic work. I think they're getting ready for at least a bit of a pullback. But let me tell you, a break on Monday or Tuesday above 191.22 in the weekly recycles, and that becomes a new leg uh, GSC. I wouldn't be surprised to call it a C. Um, and that weekly leg C is very strong. It's made a new all-time high. To put it together with the XLK, and the XLK is taking a bit of a breather at a peak D. I think also the same thing with the X. Weekly charts are fantastic for the Qs and the XLK. I just think there's a bit of a pullback here for the tech sector, and I'll do the SMHs as soon as we return. That is really important what happens there, and I'll explain what I'm looking at. I'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when 
and gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Uh, let's see. So, Sean, you should be very pleased about this. I just got uh, an email from George in New York saying, I'm still in Teva. In fact, I'm looking at the double bottom to, to add. Yeah, so uh, that double bottom is going to be really important. So any kind of pullback, I, it shouldn't actually happen right now, but it's in the political sphere. It's right in the, the field of most aggression, which is from... Uh, politicians wanting to have universal health care, et cetera. And that will affect some of these uh, pharmaceuticals and biopharmaceuticals. We'll see. So in all, the question I had was, could I flash the XLK uh, chart again? Yes. 79.24 was the high yesterday. Pull back today. Gaps down. Uh, the MACD is just about to cross negative, and it's at 0%. The histogram will be negative if it uh, pulls back a little further. And the stochastic still strong at 90%, but has turned down with the unbalanced volume. I think digestive phase, that's all. Just think of it that way. I would not be shorting something as strong as this, but I would be looking to buy on a pullback if you're inclined. And it made a peak F in the 120-minute chart. Uh, let's see. I got another question about the XLE. So... What did it say? XLE, a couple of people uh, emailed in different places. So obviously that must be important to quite a few people. But let me just find this here. Um, first of all, yes. So uh, the XLE, remember yesterday I talked about it about two days ago. I said, look, this is, a, this is obviously a peak E. This is the quickest peak A, peak B, higher peak C, higher peak D, high peak E, high peak F. Spent a whole bunch of time on it saying, this is ready for a pullback. It doesn't yet say that it's a major sell signal, but it could be a quite a sharp pullback. That's the nature of the Chapman Wave methodology when you get these very quick peaks, especially in a weekly chart, and then to alternate up, down, up, down, up, down with higher lows and higher highs. Man, that is just, this is a, this is a chart as a keeper for, for technical information. So the XLE trading down 1.15 at 65.94. L says... Um, shorted XOP, XLE yesterday. How much downside do I have? Thanks. So first of all, go step by step. We are testing right now the low that was made on that candle right there on the 4th of April of 65.61. The low today is 65.64, so it almost hit it. If it takes it out, your next one is going to be 64.87. The difference here is that if it holds us and it tries to bounce, maybe even makes an arch formation, remember my lowercase h formation, if it does that, and then either it takes it out right now and goes right to the 60, uh, 64, 63 area by Tuesday or Wednesday of next week without a bounce, that's very negative. 
But it says the quicking exit's over with, because the MACD and stochastic and the weekly chart are still strong. The quicker you can find some support to have a bit of a rally. Okay, number one. If instead, it, it, by Monday or Tuesday or Sunday night, all of a sudden oil is moving up again, it could fill some of the gap. And I'm going to draw this in as the alternative. I'm thinking it's more like this, that there's an H pattern. And then it does a retest. And the retest then maybe goes to this low right here, the 64. Uh, what did I say? 47? What did I say it was? 64.87 low of the 25th of March. But here's the big kicker. The daily could take quite a bit of a breather. But if the month, the weekly chart, MACD and Stochastic are still holding steady, um, I don't know if it's going to break down and go to the low that was made. Oh, look, trend line support. Let me just continue this trend line support. Okay, you've got trend line support in the next two days of 65.40. So keep, keep that, Al, keep that in mind. Wait, there were two questions about the XLE. What was the other question? Um, I'll get to it in a moment. Now, the only only thing I'm looking at is that gap up high from the low that was made on the 8th of, I think it's the 8th, yeah, 8th of March if, at 63.31, went to peak A, peak B, pulls back, goes to gray A, gray B, because it's under the previous high. The moment it takes out that initial 20th of March high of 67.42, starts a leg C, and that says you should go to at least a D in the Chapman wave, overlapping wave uh, methodology, and it goes to D. Then it says... At D, you should come back and retest the high that was made for the lip on the left side of 65.98. What was the low right there? 65, 67.05. So it did, no, it's impossible. The higher, it should have been 67.42. There you are. And it came down to 67. 05. So we tested. That's exactly what you want. And then it ran up just a little more because the MACD wasn't quite finished. But the stochastic was, and lo and behold, we made that top in the XLE on the 23rd of April at uh, 68.81, and now we're trading at 65.98. So that's the pattern I'm, I'm drawing in for now. So, Al, congratulations. XOP is XOP is the oil. There we go. Oops. XOP is the spider. S&P oil and gas exploration. Um, and that has almost to say, oh, I never finished doing this. This went A, B. And the little mini A, B, oh, it does the same thing. And then it went C, D, and it went to an E under the 200-period moving average. It couldn't have treated it as a repellent zone rather than a magnet. So 31.11 right now, it's taken out that left side low of importance. So the next one will be the gap of uh, 30.86 to 30.78. That's the, the next support level. And then you've got the lows that were made at 29.99. That's going to be really important. Now, I like to draw channel lines or trend lines. When you, you're coming off a major low, you cannot take it from the low. You're going to take out very quickly. I like to go two or three bars later where I've got a trough or a gap, and that's what I use. Well, we've just taken out. We haven't, uh, at this point, we're on the, on the gap, on the trend line support. If we close below that support, in, in, it's at 31.11. If it closes under 31.09 today, that's taken out the support, and it says the next level of support will be that gap. So congratulations. Oh, and this weekly chart of the X of the XOP. Let me just see XOP XLE. What a difference! The XLE has been way stronger than the XOP. I think you might get more from the XOP. So keep that in mind. Congratulations. What was the other one? Someone uh, um, did that, someone text me. Um, oh, a question about adding to the XLE. Absolutely not. Not yet. Just let's wait to see. This is the first. Look, I haven't even got a, a, a peak F yet in the weekly chart. It could even recycle if in the next couple of days it does bounce. But I'm just thinking it needs a little more time on the downside. Look, crude oil is down very sharply here. Look at this. Made a peak F top right there. You remember I drew in the rectangle. I said we're out of the box. I think we're coming back into the box. Key support will be the low of the 16th of April at 63.10. We're trading at 62.73 right now. Legs C in the weekly chart. And so far, all I can say is that crude oil, MACD and stochastic are quite poor in the daily chart. So there could be a little more downside. Maybe it's a week of rest that we have. 
I'm calling you a week of rest. So crude oil, it's going to be important that it holds the low of 61.93 to the gap uh, 61. The high 61s is going to be really important. Start, crude oil starts to trade under 61.30. You're going straight down to the 200 period moving average of 60.34. Quick turnaround. I think it's important. And I think that's what's impacting the, the Dow as well in the market. Look at Exxon. Comes out with not bad earnings. Whoa, gap down 228 at 79.94 peak E. There's that cup formation failure pattern. Um, I should have put in here, I should have put in a uh, down arrow. And this would be that inverted cap, which says double top, drop bucket pattern. You're taking out the left, so the cup low. Be careful because it go one to one to the downside to 78. I'll be right back. Dow's up 17. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge, heard here at TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Don't forget, Steve comes up straight after this, and you've got Dave White, and you've got Tom O'Brien. Have a wonderful weekend. In case I run out of time, I've got a lot to do here. Here we go. So, uh, United Health. I, I, I happened to uh, tune into. Uh, was I here? Yeah, how did I do it? Uh, was it yesterday? Anyway, maybe a couple of times this week, I've had a chance to listen to CNBC after the close. And I, I just don't know how many people have not talked about UNH, United Health uh, Group, as uh, a major buy signal. How could it go low, the PE earnings, et cetera? And I'm looking at this and I'm saying, you know, I remember them talking about this when it was making its high in the 287 area back in December uh, and it has fallen to the low just recently of 209. That's a, that's a pretty big hit. I don't disagree that it's a great company, but I have to say that I'm looking at this and I think 
this is almost like the gold in a way. It's just kept going down. But this is a different pattern. And this is an equity. So it's very different. So th this is what I'm looking at. This is a gray leg A and a gray leg B. At this particular point, we're in gray leg B. I'm just looking at this and saying, I think there's a trade. I don't think this is a buy just yet. I think there's a lot more work to be done. That's what the weekly chart is saying. But this is attempting to form some kind of a base. This goes into the same thing as Teva. This is in the wrong area, but it might turn out that it's got a really good rally. If on a short-term basis, it can close above 242, it's at 236, 36 points higher. It's up five today already. If it can close above uh, uh, 242, then I would have a target of the 244, 14-period moving average in the weekly chart. And then I would say, I think on a shorter-term basis, you can consider that we've raised the base to the 231 to the 228 area. If at any point in the next four weeks, 228, I'm sorry, 222 is taken out as support, I think it's got a problem once again. So this is a, the big thing here for me is that there's a Chapman Wave Roman candle. It's not coming off the high, but it could be coming off a pretty decent low. And we'll be looking at this right through next week when we close the month. How this candle closes the month is going to give me a tremendous amount of information. It's a good start to an attempt for a nice bounce. Is this the low? I'm not sure that this is the low just yet. I think there's going to be a lot more testing. So have a wonderful weekend. Check out my opening call. We've had some real nice trades, real nice positions. And uh, let's see how that lasts. I didn't get much of the estimations, except I thought there'd be a bounce. And then we'll see if it makes the H pattern to fall next week. I'll be back on Monday. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service.